This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman, as we go now to the besieged city of Mykolaiv in southern Ukraine. <laughs> The sounds of Russian bombs exploding near the city of Mykolaiv in southern Ukraine. This is the city's mayor, Mykolaiv Alexander Sienkiewicz, speaking Tuesday following intense Russian rocket attacks. Yesterday, they attacked the city uh, with uh, cluster rockets, who, uh, you know, that they are forbidden. Uh, so, 64 buildings were attacked. I mean, civil buildings, people where people live, they damage. Uh, they damaged all those uh, um, uh, buildings, and uh, let's say about 40 rockets were unexploded. So I think they launched for about more than 100 rockets to the city. Many Ukrainian refugees have been fleeing the Mykolaiv region to escape the fighting. This is one woman from the area. Her name is Irina Mikhalenka, who was able to reach Romania. We have a war, but we are not from Odessa. We came to Odessa from Mykolaiv region because there were very, very intense events there. We were hiding with my family in the basement, and Russian forces bombed so hard that sand was falling from the ceiling. And we were very scared, so we evacuated to the other side of the city. Also, when we were walking, the bridge was blown up. And when we crossed over the wreckage of the bridge, because there was no other way out, there were corpses of Russian soldiers lying there, and they were turned inside out. We're joined now by Igor Yudenkov of Mykolaiv. Uh, prior to the invasion, he was working as a project manager at an IT company in Kherson, which is now under Russian control. Uh, Igor, thank you so much for being willing to come on to Democracy Now! Uh, so you've got Russian-occupied Kherson now, um, and your own city under siege. The video we played was from you. Describe what's happening right now. Uh, hello, everyone who uh, hear me. Right now, I am in Mykolaiv. On the border of our city, there is a Russian troops. Even right now, when uh, I am listening to you, and right now, when I am uh, speaking with you, there is artillery and missile attack. Also, there was a air raid signal, but I stay with you to uh, explain and to uh, explain you what is happening today. Igor, you are incredibly brave, and I just want to say um, um, thank you for speaking to us. But if there is any siren you hear or you feel you should go, you should go. So tell us what's happening every day. Uh, every day, uh, my day is uh, starting that I uh, check all my friends, all my relatives, and all my uh, colleagues uh, from work, that everybody is alive. Also, the situation for me is hard, because my uh, family right now is also under occupied territory in Mykolaiv region. The situation is bad, but uh, because there are some pro the problems begin with the food and water. But uh, I every day I have uh, no we have uh, telephone talks and I try to support them but I have uh, no tools how to help them because they are full of Russian. Um, we just lost Igor for a minute. We're hoping that um, we'll be able to get him back. I'm, I'm, Go I'm ahead, with you. Igor. I'm You're with you. us, yes. And again, your yes. wife and your daughter are separated from you at this point. Is that right? Yes. Yes, because uh, before it's it's when it started, I uh, think that it will be uh, more safety for them to stay in a uh, countryside, not in a city, because uh, for me, I was sure that uh, they will bomb and uh, they will hit all our cities, because it's their main uh, aim uh, to make fear uh, for all 
Ukrainian nation. So, can you have been there helping other residents? Describe what you're doing and even the footage that you sent us that we just played of the Russian attacks. Uh, how, from my, how uh, I right now helping, I am trying to work like a half part remote on my uh, usual work. But also, I try uh, to help uh, my own city in different ways. Many of our citizens uh, left our city, and many pets and you know, like domestic animals stay without, uh, stay alone. I also try to feed them uh, when, I, uh, when I have time and when I uh, can find some food for them. Also, I help our uh, like local defense uh, with making send uh, or, no, box sends just to defend some uh, streets or so on. Uh, we were just communicating with some people who are helping families leave Mikolaev. They leave, um, they then come back. How hard is it to come and go from Mikolaev? And what about your access to food, to water, to electricity? Are people remaining in basements? I mean, uh, in Mir Mirapol, uh, which is very near you, uh, people are trapped. They cannot leave. Okay. Uh, in Nikolaev, the situation is better because uh, we have a free bridge uh, through the river, which connects us uh, with the road to Odessa. It's like it's the bridge of a life, uh, because uh, through this bridge, uh, food can come to our uh, city. But uh, it's about Nikolaev. But about Kherson, the situation is uh, more harder because uh, most of the uh, shops are occupied by Russian troops. They just uh, they just uh, how it say uh, take from shops what they want, and there is no access uh, for civilian to the shops, and also they fear because the Russian troops are armed with the weapons. What message do you want people in the rest of the world to hear as you speak from the besieged city of Mikolaev? Uh, for whole world, for whole democracy world, right now, here in Ukraine, we stop the invasion of Russian Putin troops. They, in, uh, they won't attack only Ukraine. They won't attack whole democracy democracy of our life, the freedom. Because Ukraine is a free country. We have a, dem we have a democracy election. We can uh, have meetings. We can, we can vote. But they didn't like it. They won't fight against freedom. I, from my point of view, I think that whole world need uh, to help us here to stop their invasion. Right now, we are really, we have needs in a body armor, helmets and equipment. It is what is really, uh, we don't have it in, uh, uh, there is some problems with this. And uh, not of all our uh, forces, our equipment, uh, 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 has such equipment. Well, Igor, I want to thank you for being with us. Um, we are going to check back with you in the coming days. Igor Yudenkov is a uh, lives in Mikolaev. He is volunteering there, where he's been helping other residents, um, also those who left their pets there, trying to care for them, get them some kind of sustenance. He's been separated from his wife and his daughter, who are currently in Russian-occupied territory in southern Ukraine. Uh, before the Russian invasion, he was an IT professional.
Next up, we're going to speak with the retired Colonel Andrew Basevich of the Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft. He says the United States cannot absolve itself of responsibility for the catastrophe in Ukraine. Stay with us.